Today, I wanted to provide a high level overview of refreshing a database, either from Dev and QA up to prod or backwards from prod back to Dev or QA. Refreshing a database is best suited when either establishing a final solution in an upper environment after the testing phase to correct any issues in lower environments that cannot be overcome manually or through the migration, or finally to establish the final solution moving backwards from prod and QA to lower environments either for further testing or as a training environment for the client that contains the same functionality and data model as the upper environments. At its high level, the following steps typically need to be performed when undertaking a refresh. You're gonna back up the environment specific data in the dev QA data model. Optionally, you can export all DAM master records to a file. You can back up the environment specific data in the EPIM and EPX databases to files. Back up the enabled databases for both dev and QA as a safety precaution, and then back up the enabled database for prod. You then restore the prod enabled databases into the dev QA database, restore the environment specific data to EPIM and EPX, restore the environment specific data in dev and QA, and then clean up interactive EPX workflows. You can optionally restore the dam master records from your file or replace the dam root files in dev and QA from prod. Typically, when you're backing up the environment specific data within dev or QA, you'll want to focus on dam config, dam variants, dam master, only if the dev QA dam root is not going to be refreshed, your scheduled imports and exports, as well as your configuration repositories. The content of these repositories has to be saved for later restore by performing the following steps. Navigating over to your field, so dam, dam config, First, we would select all, select export. Using the advanced options checkbox, we would hit next. We want to verify that we are using an Excel notebook, but that the preference is actually all attributes instead of just a summary of the attributes themselves. Once we've run through and exported all of our environment specific data, we'll want to shut down services for dev or QA, depending on what the target environment is. Next, there are some settings in the EPIM and EPX databases that must be captured and restored after the refresh of those databases from prod by going through the following steps. First, we need to get into the server and open the SQL Server Management Studio. We'll develop a new query. This will need to be run against the EPX database. So we'll toggle EPX and plug in our query and let it run. Once we have our results, we'll want to save them to an empty notepad, which I already have open here for us. Then we have another query to run, so we'll grab our next query here. Let that one run as well. From here, we'll take our results and paste them into the same notepad. And we're going to save it specifically under Restore EPX Environment Settings dot SQL. From here, we'll want to open up another notepad. And we're going to next run a query against the EPIM database. Before running our EPIM query, we'll actually want to put in the framework for a new SQL code in our notepad that we just created with two specific lines to contain the results of our next query that we're going to run. Before running, make sure that you have the dropdown set to EPIM, otherwise you won't actually get any results. Once we have EPIM toggled, we'll put in our new query, let that run. Once we have our results, we'll take them and we'll plug them into our notepad between the two lines specified just for these results. From here, we'll save this as restore EPIM environment settings.sql. Since the dev or QA databases are going to be restored from a backup of the prod database, a backup of each should be created as a safety measure. If the refresh proceeds normally, these backups will not be needed. The dev and QA enable services should not be running while the backup and restore operations are being performed. To backup the enabled databases, we'll use SQL Server Management Studio once again by performing the following steps. Log into the server 
and then we're going to right click on the EPIM database itself. And under tasks, we're going to go to backup. First, we would want to change the destination to disk and click add. As you can see here, we already have a backup set up under backup databases and then EPIM itself. We would change the file name to enable prod.back and then click OK. From here, you would wait for the backup to complete. You'll want to repeat each of the above steps for the EPX database and name your backup file appropriately. Once the backups of the prod database have been created, they need to be restored to the dev or QA database by going again back into SQL Server Management, right clicking on EPIM, and this time instead of under backup and tasks, we'll go to restore and then database. Once our menu props up, we'll want to make sure the source for restore is from a device. So under source, we'll select device. And then the three ellip the ellipses here to go ahead and select the source. Once our window pops up, we'll want to make sure that our backup media type is file. And we'll go ahead and add a record. Depending on your save point, you would just blow over to where you saved the database backup and select that one specifically, then select OK and OK again. From here, we'll want to make sure that we have the restore checkbox toggled, and then we're going to file over to options. We want to make sure that our restore options are toggled as overwrite the existing database with replace to call back to our file that we just toggled. Once our ducks are in a row, we'll go ahead and click OK, and we'll wait for the restore to complete in full. Once our restore is finished processing, we'll go back to SQL Server Management Studio to open a query for our EPX database and load the, our restore EPX environment settings SQL and execute. We'll then open up a new query for the EPIM database and calling back to our file restore EPIM environment settings.sql and execute. From all the records from the following tables, we'll want to remove B work item version team, B work item version, and B work item. Next, you'll want to log into the EPIM database using the SQL Server Management Studio and the user and password that was originally defined for Dev and QA, and you'll verify that the EPIM tables can be accessed. If the login fails, you'll want to try the user password for prod. If that does succeed, you'll want to change the password back to the original values for Dev and QA. You'll follow those same steps for the EPX database as well. Once you've completed this step, you'll want to restart services for EPIM only as of right now. After we've logged back into the UI, we'll want to ensure that our prod backup has been restored to the Dev QA database, and the environment-specific data must be restored from the files that we created in the first section of this video for each of the following repositories, being DAM config, DAM variants, and DAM master. This is the process of going through import records, selecting the specific file that we had generated, and making sure that all our keys are lined up. Keep in mind, when bringing back in your records to the scheduled imports and exports repositories, you could very well have environment-specific settings, such as SFTPs or server addresses, that you'll need to update accordingly to make sure that they're pointing towards the right point of integration for any particular export or import you have defined. From here, we'll want to clean up any interactive EPX workflows. So if there are interactive workflows and they're not migrated, then all work items, including the ones that haven't completed, should be purged from the workflows following the purge steps. Next, the database restore completely replaces the contents of the DAM master repository, which points files into the DAM root folder. Prior to the refresh, the file locations for files residing in both dev and QA and prod may not be in the same folder under DAM root. Therefore, either the dev QA DAM master repository must be restored to the values prior to the refresh, or the dev QA DAM root folder contents must be replaced with the prod DAM root folder. From here, you do standard smoke testing as far as adding records, triggering a workflow, and triggering your integrations to make sure that everything is in line and functioning. Thank you for your time.